Just had lunch and we ordered bubble tea. Actually, this is a, like I wanted something with taro in it. I didn't just want taro and milk or taro and tea, which I had last time. And I used jasmine tea, which I don't like because it was way too fragrant and fake. So I got taro, taro milk tea and then I added boba. So it's basically bubble tea with Tara. Although I don't really like this brand because you like have to choose a sugar option and usually I just do no sugar. I'm like, this is so sweet. Uh-uh. I'm just going to do some self quizzes for the week and then I will get started on my article for next week for my job. And then I will work out later. down like I don't know 20 minutes ago to try and write or continue writing my escape roll poem for April 16th and what did I end up doing? Watch videos of Hosier and went down a rabbit hole of the analysis for moment silence because today's prompt is language and i just had this phrase in my head that was the language of tongues and then i just thought of hosier naturally so i'm very inspired now but yeah this morning i just finished writing my article and proofread that so it's all ready for next week and i finished replying to some discussion posts but after i write my poem i'm either going to work on a secret project or start editing an asmr video that i filmed like two weeks ago or was it one week ago i don't remember I will do a read, like a reading sit down chat 
either later today or tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> I never filmed here before. This is so funny. Made it. Made it. Made it. <laughs> Welcome to my garden. Ta da. Oops. Ta da. Sometimes borage, instead of being blue, it's like, it's like this color. It's gradient pink and purple, which is so like Barbie. Like, it's so Barbie, like it's so pretty. Also, it's so hot right now. <laughs> I'm gonna try this croissant that my sister made yesterday. Um, it was her first time making croissant, but it still looks very good. And this is dark chocolate. I'm a big dark chocolate fan, like I love dark chocolate, but this could be sweeter. I mean, it does have layers, but I still like it. And we had some chocolate syrup. Oh my god, chocolate syrup. Or I would, I would have this with ice cream, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna finish my yogurt and go get some ice cream. I have acquired my ice cream. So now I'm just gonna have this while I edit this dermatologist has some more appointment are you stuck I just finished um, working on my secret project and now, hmm, should I shower now or should I edit? Because I have to cook tonight and I want to have some chill time in bed. I was just starting to edit a little reel or a short that is about Hotel World by Ali Smith, which is a book that my boyfriend recommended to me. I genuinely meant to do it as a reel, but look at this time. So I think I'm going to have to separate it into parts. Like I did not realize I had that much to say. <laughs> I mean, I did, but I should have known because I'm a slow talker and there's a lot of pauses between my words like that's all i'm doing every time i edit just editing out the in-between spaces because i think so slowly while i'm talking i'll actually finish editing this later 
I was going to do a book chat finally today, but I think I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow. Berries on the floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a bee. Hey, yep. Oh, I was gonna say, is there, like, is there ham on the inside? I think so. Yeah, tomorrow. Ham and sliced cheese. Sliced cheese and. <laughs> I just said sliced cheese. Okay, so how to cut potato? Well, actually, into more mm. cubes. Yeah, like I want. I have my drink here with me. I'm having a green tea right now. I just had lunch and I'm finally sitting down to have a little chat with you about the books I'm reading right now. I think I will start with Big Swiss because I have a lot of thoughts on it and I've been actually like taking notes while reading this time so I can remember all my thoughts and I've also been giving my boyfriend reading updates just on Big Swiss because I, I just find it so interesting. So I came across this book last month and it's a pretty new release. I mean, if you just look at the cover, it's really striking. And actually, it was picked up for a show last month as well. And Jodie Comer is going to be starring in it. Like, that's going to be so cool. But basically, it's about this transcriptionist named Greta who transcribes therapy sessions from this therapist named Ohm in a small town called Hudson, which is in New York. And she enjoys her job because she likes the eavesdropping aspect of it and she likes working from home. She lives in this old Dutch farmhouse with her roommate Sabine. The house is in so many stages of just falling apart. It's not well suited for living in. It's uninsulated and there's literally a beehive in the middle of the living room and her roommate instead of getting rid of it like a normal person as she says she liked it so much that she asked a beekeeper to build an enclosure around it so they have this beehive in their house and the bees are all dying off i mean because yeah that's not its natural <laughs> living habitat but I thought that was very interesting. The farmhouse is described... Oh, her roommate owns the Dutch har farmhouse, by the way. The house sat on 12 acres and was surrounded by fruit and dairy farms. Although it felt like the edge of nowhere, they were only a one-cigarette drive from town. Also, Greta has this habit of comparing women she likes to vegetables which i found interesting when she was talking about her roommate she's like personality wise she reminded greta of one of those exotic vegetables she was drawn to at the farmer's market but didn't know how to cook yeah i just like that but then the book is named big swiss because 
one of the therapist's clients is this tall Swiss woman and she only knows the patients by their initials because she's just a transcriptionist but in her name she nicknamed that client Big Swiss because she likes her she's fascinated by her Big Swiss is this gynecologist but she's never had an orgasm not even by herself and the way it was like revealed to you as a reader and also ohm was really funny but big swiss was you find out in the very in near the beginning that big swiss was violently assaulted eight years ago but she's very removed from her experience like she doesn't let that define her and the way that's shown was also really interesting because ohm kept trying to talk about like her trauma and her journey and using all these like woke words (laughs) um you'll see what i mean if you read it she knows that her attacker will be getting out of jail soon and he also lives in hudson i will say you should really check the trigger warnings if you want to read this book i had to skip through the part like her session when she describes her assault Uh, and I knew it was coming up so I was able to skip it because during the sessions it's literally written like a script so uh, me doing that was the equivalent of watching a scary scary movie and going like this Um, so I did see some words but but I was fine like I didn't know what happened to her I mean, I kind of knew, but but yeah, trigger warnings, very important. Generally, the funniest parts of the books are when Ohm is is talking to his clients. Because let's talk about him, because he basically reinvented himself as a sex and relationship therapist. He was originally named Bruce, but... um, Let me read this quote to you. Ohm's relationship coaching style seemed reminiscent of getting hit on at a bar, not by a yoga teacher, as his name would suggest, but by an unneutered therapy animal. (laughs) Like, he is just such a character. He seems like this random dude who is pretending to be a sex and relationship therapist in this small town where everyone knows everyone so that he can just know everyone's secrets because he literally does not seem like a therapist at all he just he's just like this random dude bro and he has a very spiritual approach to his work i guess i don't know i keep feeling like at some point it's gonna be revealed that he's not even a real therapist at all like my question is is he an actual therapist and maybe he's not and maybe he really just wants to know everyone's secrets i don't know it just seems very sketchy (laughs) um but more about the main character greta she had a very disturbing childhood and when she was in her mid-30s she met this man called stacy who she was engaged to for a really long time i think nine or ten years but in the end she just couldn't fathom having a healthy loving relationship because of her childhood i guess so she broke his heart she left him and now she's here in hudson doing this job also she met big swiss in real life actually and she said her name was rebecca now i'm at the part where they went to this bar together to have some drinks greta got really drunk because she's like she's trying not to let big swiss become friends with her uh because you know she knows all these secrets about big swiss and she knows that would probably ruin a chance at a real friendship and so she tries to be as obnoxious as possible and it's just turning out really funny i guess that's all i have to say about big swiss for now 
but now let's move on to metamorphosis so this is a classic that you've probably heard of and you've either read or it's on your tbr or maybe you haven't heard of it but metamorphosis is a classic book by kafka and it's really short it's not this whole thing actually the story is only 50 pages long uh like this is the story although the text in here is very very small like look at that it was very hard to read but it also has some explanatory notes to the text which i i underlined a lot of and there were some of his letters to people um and then now i'm at the end part which is just all these critical essays which I've also underlined a lot of and it's helping me understand the story more but basically it's about this man named Gregor Samsa who wakes up one day as a giant bug and there's been different translations like he's a vermin, he's a cockroach, he's a beetle but none of these are correct i guess you would say because it's not meant to be interpreted as him being a real bug it's just like a metaphor but for the sake of me just talking about this i'm just going to say cockroach so he can't go to work he finds that he can't communicate with his family anymore and his family become very like annoyed with him and also disgusted by him and he's confined to his room for like months and months. I wouldn't say there's really a plot in this story. It's a no plot, just vibes kind of book. And a lot of the main character's inner conflicts and his conflicts with the world around him are sort of autobiographical. Don't quote me on that, but I'm just saying there's a lot of similarities between those and Kafka's real conflicts that he had in real life which is what the critical essays are talking about so I guess that's all I'll say about that for now because I don't want to spoil it but later in this vlog I think I will read some quotes from the critical essays that I thought were interesting because I've been talking for way too long now <laughs> today but I just wanted to show you some candles I got that arrived earlier by the way I got this one recently as well it's so cute but I wasn't a huge fan of the smell it says it's lavender but it's not it's just a fake like hotel scent except a too strong hotel scent for my small room like if it was actually burned at a hotel where it's big it's fine but this is not this is way too strong i cannot use that before bed when all my windows are already closed so i rebought this candle which you've probably seen in my vlogs before mm. So good this is lavender eucalyptus i always need to have a lavender candle like a legit lavender candle because i <laughs> always need to calm down and then you've probably also seen like this kind of shaped candle but this is another scent that i haven't gotten before it's called romantic silk flowers <laughs> um it's kind of strong for my liking it smells like a very feminine floral scent 
and I would say it is romantic. I don't remember if there's flat, uh, rose notes in here. I do remember there's also some lavender notes in here. I don't know how much I would like to burn this in my room at night as well because it smells so strong. But this one was a highly recommended scent from their store. And now I'm like even more skeptical of highly recommended candle scents because I'm very particular about scents to begin with. I don't like very strong or fake ones, but I do like this store's candles better, so yay! <laughs> stopped vlogging for a few days because I was just reading very slowly still in a bit of a slump and my past few days have been just filled with schoolwork anyways it's almost noon and I am sitting in bed because I'm recovering from my 10th time having appendicitis in my life 10 times can you believe that? Me neither. Last night was horrible. I was in a lot of pain. I am still in pain, but I've done this 10 times, so you know, don't worry about me. I kind of wanted to give an update on Big Swiss because I have actually been reading that more and I have reading notes. Made more notes? So. Last time... I forget where I ended talking last time. I think I was saying that Greta accidentally met Big Swiss in real life at the dog park and she recognized her voice and then they sort of become friends and started having this affair because Big Swiss is married. Big Swiss realized she was being followed by someone, not her attacker, but just these random guys in vans. But most of the story revolved around Big Swiss and Greta's relationship. A lot of the scenes where they're together is written so interestingly. Throughout the book, you just keep wondering, is Ohm a real therapist or not? Because his behavior is so weird. And then at one point, Greta goes to Big Swiss and her husband Luke's house for a dinner. I'm not going to spoil what happens. But basically the themes that emerges are trauma and whether it gets to dictate our lives and our behavior. Because Greta thinks so. She thinks because of her disturbing childhood, she was inherently programmed to behave in this really shitty way. Whereas Big Swiss is very removed from her trauma. I think I said that in my last reading update. It is something that happened to her, but she made a choice not to let that influence her life. Like, that's not what her whole life is about. So, that is very interesting. So, I'm 83% in now. So, I'm almost done. I'll either finish it today or tomorrow. I want to watch a movie today, so maybe not today, but tomorrow, yes. Um, and then I have not read any more of this. Maybe I read this once since my last update because I've been just really wanting to escape and reading a critical essay is not escaping. <laughs> um, but let me read you some interesting quotes. Mm, just a couple. Here is a critical essay from Ralph Friedman called Kafka's Obscurity. And at one point, he says that Gregor Samsa turning into a bug was actually an aspired condition. He had been imprisoned in his animal existence, 
which had been implied by his human life, yet freed from intolerable burdens, including the tyranny of time. In his death, likewise, he is both extinguished and set free. Here's another one from Edwin Hong. He says that Gregor has no vital mission and he has cut himself off from society. Instead of finding his many actual identities, he shrinks and is finally converted into nothingness. There is no moral closure in the metamorphosis. It ends with the stark critical question of the individual and society which Gregor's metamorphosis poses. Um, I think that's all I will read you right now, but the critical essays at the end have definitely helped me a lot in thinking more about the novel, but I just always think it's so cool that it's still so relevant today because Kafka, when he was writing it, like, didn't like it, he would often doubt himself and in the beginning in the introduction it actually says that when Kafka was dying he told his friend Max Broad to burn all his writings because he just you know didn't want the world to ever see them but his friend denied his dying wish and he went and published all his works and look at where he is now <laughs> I just think that's so cool. Today we'll just be spent in bed, chilling, watching a movie, not doing much in general, just healing. So it's two days later, and I have finished Big Swiss. I spent the last two days mostly in bed, just chilling and watching stuff and editing a lot, actually. And I finished Big Swiss last night, and I gave it four stars because it was such an interesting read. I haven't read a book this closely in so long, like actually taking the time to take notes while I'm reading it, just paying a lot of attention. And I've been talking to my boyfriend about it basically every day. So it was almost like we were reading it together. That's been really fun. The ending was, well, a part of the ending was kind of unexpected. I'm still thinking about why that happened. You also get to know even more about Greta's backstory at the very end of the book. Um, and that was done in an interesting way, like, I really liked it. Um, throughout the book, I just felt like I wanted Greta to be okay. I'm not gonna say whether she was or not. I think that's all I wanted to say, actually, because I'm not trying to spoil a book for you here. But basically, I'm just really excited to see Jodie Comer play Big Swiss. <laughs> yeah. This was one of the most bizarre books I've ever read, and the women are unhinged, like Greta and her roommate especially. They have such interesting interactions with each other. This has been a pretty long vlog, I think. I've already started editing it, and I just started a new vlog today as well. I hope you enjoy this reading vlog. Um, I'll see you in the next one.